kicking things off at numero uno is the Expose Him. Mercenary's signature debuff, the Expose, makes him one of the most fun characters to play as in my opinion. This is because it rewards an aggressive playstyle since Expose will on first hit expose the enemy and then on second hit when hitting an exposed enemy reduces all skill cooldowns by one second and deals an additional 350% damage. The exposed debuff can be activated by the following three of Mercenary's techniques. First being the primary laser sword attack, however it only is activated on the third hit of this combo. Second being the focused assault utility skill. And third being the notoriously difficult to unlock special ability slicing wins. And I would be absolutely remiss if I failed to mention the name Kabaj in the same sentence as unlocking slicing wins because this guy has been putting out a tutorial for every single prismatic trial for the past four years. So let's all do ourselves a favor, take our caps off and toss those hands up in a salute to Kabaj more patriotic than a Boy Scouts Memorial Day Parade section. As mentioned before, the key to utilizing the Expose debuff to its maximum potential is playing aggressively and just keep on hitting enemies so it lessens your cooldowns so you can keep on smacking them some more. To maximize the potential of Expose, what you want to do is take advantage of the fact that the third hit of the Laser Sword primary has an extended hitbox that lasts for several frames. By utilizing this in conjunction with the Focused Assault Utility skill, which exposes enemies after one second, but also has a hitbox on the initial dash, what you can do is time it so right after you do that third slash you dash forward hitting the enemies exposing them all and then they get hit again after one second triggering the expose and resetting all of your cooldowns if you hit enough enemies absolutely bonkers numero dos is the invincible under the sun Mercenary's default special skill Eviscerate launches him forward at the nearest enemy and attacks with a flurry of sword strikes dealing 110% damage repeatedly and the number of strikes increases with your attack speed. So stock up on those soldier syringes and mocha jokas. And while the damage output of this skill is pretty sizable in and of itself, the best part of this ability is the fact that during the Eviscerate animation, Mercenary is completely invincible. This is absolutely massive since it lends to that aggressive playstyle that we talked about before because he can just get into the thick of it and if there's anything troublesome coming, he can pop that eviscerate, slash up his foes, and not get touched in the process. Probably one of the most useful situations to utilize this ability in is when the Wandering Vagrant boss, aka the giant jellyfish, is charging up their electric orb about to rock you down to Electric Avenue. By targeting the Wandering Vagrant and popping Eviscerate just before this attack lands, you can tank through this explosion with the iframes of Eviscerate and furthermore can punish that giant jelly blob in the sky with more slashing action than a kid who just found out that you had Fruit Ninja on your phone back in the early 2010s. Numero Trace is the Let It Rip. Mercenary's default secondary skill, Whirlwind, is kind of unique in the fact that it has two separate animations depending on whether you use it on the ground or in the air. On the ground, it does a horizontal sweeping spin attack, while if you use it in the air, this spin attack becomes a vertical wheel of death. 
Each of these has its utility as the horizontal version is good for clearing groups of enemies that are mobbing you. And when falling, the vertical one can be used as an effective fall cancel. However, the secret ability of Whirlwind only becomes apparent when you use it while sprinting forward on any slope surface in which you turn yourself into a supercharged Beyblade and launch yourself into the sky. Pachoom! This let it rip tech is super useful for navigating around the map quickly and getting to high hard to reach places as well as getting yourself out of any sticky situations you might find yourself in and getting a better vantage point for attacking enemies or for scouting out where the teleporter is on the map. However, be warned, with great power comes great responsibility, and if you do not remember to cancel your fall, you can suffer more damage than my nine-year-old fingers after sticking them into the Beyblade arena trying to save my Metal Dragoon from an incoming defeat at the hands of my younger brother's Death Dryer. Man, could that boy pull a ripcord. The fastest Beyblader east of the Mississippi. Numero Quattro is the Mercenaire Easy. By far and away, Mercenary is the most mobile of the survivors straight out the box. This is because not only does he come with a built-in Hopu feather, that's right, he gets a second jump right off the rip, but also pretty much every single move in his kit can be used to more easily and efficiently navigate around the map. The laser sword can kind of do this fall delay. The whirlwind obviously has that Beyblade let it rip factor. Rising thunder can launch you up into the sky and can also be used as a fall cancel in addition to whirlwind. And then obviously focused and blinding assault are a pretty lengthy dash. Eviscerate can also be used as an additional dash similar to his utility skills when used not on a targeted enemy. Honestly, the only one that really doesn't have any mobility potential is Slicing Winds. However, this is just an absolutely busted ranged move for an otherwise melee only character. By chaining together these moves, you can stay in the air almost indefinitely, dodging any of those paltry, peasant attacks from the groundbound beetles, Lemurians, and other enemies, freak them kids. And it's no coincidence whatsoever that this was the way Mercenary was designed to be played, because his Rising Thunder unlock achievement has you doing this very thing. To further cement his Airness's GOAT status in the mobility department, let's take a quick historical rewind to the 2021 Anniversary Update Finals, where in Game 6, after being absolutely bludgeoned all series by Merc's capabilities, Mythrix asked the developers of the games themselves to add in the pillars to try to nerf this man. And well, Mercenary, let's just say he took that personally. Even without his trusty all-star teammates, Scotty the hard light afterburner Pippin, and Dennis the eccentric vase Rodman sidelined with injuries caused by some dubious dirty plays earlier in the series from Mythrix and the boys, the Jumpman himself was able to cement his place in history with a historic Game 6 pillar skip upset with only a couple of backup mags and Paul's goat hooves on his hip. Basically what I'm getting at here is even with the most limited of mobility items, Merc can still pull off the pillar skip, but you need to get a little creative with using your abilities and making sure that you don't lose too much ground while the other ones recover from cooldown. If you happen to find a hard light afterburner though, that is an absolute easy cheesy victory over this platforming puzzle. And rounding things off at numero cinco is the rip 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 This tech revolves around the fact that either of Mercenary's utility skills, blinding assault, or focused assault, 
If the ending animation hitbox of the dash ends in the hitbox of a flying enemy, the momentum is transferred and they are sent flying in that direction. By combining this interaction together with Whirlwind's Let It Rip Beyblade technique, you can launch yourself in the sky and then use this to your advantage to dash into the enemy, propelling them, slamming them into the ground for the Slam Rai Champlu. This technique can be used on any flying enemy in the game so long as you get the timing and distance right on the hitboxes. However, it is by far and away most useful on straight up deleting bosses such as the Wandering Vagrant Solus Control Unit and even the Hidden Alloy Worship Unit on Siren's Call to claim yourself a tasty free red item. Be warned, this is a pretty difficult technique to pull off reliably and definitely takes some practice and I suck at it compared to my brother. And while he seemingly can do it on command, for me it's more like Sex Panther by Odiana. It works 60% of the time, every time. One last thing to mention is the damage caused by this tech is tied to your momentum and speed so the more movement items you have the more damage you will do and if you don't have enough movement items it may take a couple of hits for this to fully kill the bosses. And now for a little bonus, the world's greatest items for the world's greatest swordsman. Kicking things off with the white items, we're going to start off with the focus crystal, which provides a damage boost for any near range attacks, which just synergizes perfectly with Merc's playstyle as he's always getting up close and personal and hacking and slashing away. So you're getting this damage boost on pretty much all of his attacks, except for slicing wins. Next up is the Mocha Joka and Soldier Syringe for bumping up his attack speed, which not only helps with his Laser Sword primary, but also gives him more attacks in the duration of Eviscerate. So you're doing more damage and more slashes within that fixed duration of invulnerable time. Next up is the Gasoline, which is just useful pretty much on all survivors, but especially on Merc. Since he's getting in there all the time, it's good for helping to clear out hordes of enemies when he's starting to get swarmed. And finally, the Backup Mag, which adds an additional charge of your secondary for each one that you pick up, is extremely versatile for not only doing more damage, but for pulling off some of the different techniques mentioned before. Moving on to the greens, the Shuriken is a massive pickup for Merc, because just in case you want to dip your toes into that Shinobi lifestyle while still remaining the ultimate Slammerai, then you have that option as well. It provides great ranged capability especially if you're not rocking slicing winds and are using eviscerate and is good for procking bands at a distance speaking of the bands i always mention these bad boys but they are absolutely busted no matter who you pick them up on except for maybe commando because he can't reliably proc them but that's a different story the bands are a huge damage output and when rocking eviscerate or slicing winds can reliably be triggered as well as when using the focused assault utility skill. Next up is the holy proc trifecta of Will of the Wisp, ATG Missile, and Ukulele, which are pretty much busted once again on every character and make clearing out hordes of enemies a absolute breeze. Moving on to the void items, the Lysate Cell, which provides an extra charge of his special skills, so either Eviscerate or Slicing Winds, is a massive pickup since these are his bread and butter for high damage attacks, and you want as many charges of these as possible. Another great void item on Merc is the Weeping Fungus, aka the Wungus, and since you will constantly be sprinting and moving around as Merc, then having the capability to heal while sprinting is a massive buff. And now for the red items, you can't beat the hard light afterburner in terms of versatility and the fact that it basically turns mercenary into a walking pillar skip. Having an additional two charges of his utility skill is straight up busted and makes him even more fun to play as. 
If you are lucky enough to stumble upon some head stompies while you're rocking whirlwind, then things are looking pretty bad for the citizens of Petrichor 5 because in combination with the Beyblade Let It Rip, you can launch yourself to the stratosphere and then come slamming down from the heavens by pressing your interact key, dealing absolutely nutty damage. Combine this with the crowbar and the bands, and it's straight game over for Mythrix. Both the Tesla coil and the Frost Relic can be used to great effect on Merc as well because he's always close range with enemies and these both provide either a shocking or a snowstorm like aura which damages nearby enemies. And last but not least, the Brilliant Behemoth has a particularly interesting interaction with Merc's Exposed debuff as it is able to proc not only on the initial hit but also the explosions caused by the Brilliant Behemoth. So if you want that double dipping Bohemian Rhapsody, then make sure to pick up this bad Larry. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Let me know any of your Merc tips down below. Thanks for tuning on in, and we'll catch you next time. Adios, amigos.